Long Live Your Turtle here, and in this video I want to show you how to make a combo turtle resting area shelf and cave. Right now Harold's actually in the cave. It's strong, elegant, and a super simple DIY project. Let's get to it. All right, so this is our DIY underwater turtle resting area and cave. Turtles like to forage, they like to hang out, and they like to kind of hide around sometimes. The cave is gonna do that for them. They can get under here when they're feeling a little skittish or just want that protection of a nice little roof over your head, you might say. And in the resting area, turtles just kind of like to hang out. Eventually they're gonna either fall asleep, take a nap, or just not want to swim anymore. And right now for my tank, Harold can hang on to the ramp here for that basking area, but it has really nothing else to kind of rest on. So this little rest area will hopefully be an excellent spot to just hang out, stop swimming, and just a nice little pedestal for your turtle to contemplate the meaning of life. Let me show you how to build this exactly. Let's get in the tank and let Harold enjoy the new combo turtle resting area and cave. All right, everything you see on the workbench is what we're gonna need for this project. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the acrylic sheet that we're gonna use for this project. It's gonna basically be the main structure of everything. So I'm using a 0.22 inch by 24 by 18 inch sheet that I ended up cutting using a table saw. It's a pretty thick sheet of acrylic and using a table saw is just much easier. Just go slow and keep the blade pretty high. Uh, otherwise you can use typical hand tools like an acrylic scoring tool. It's just you're gonna have to score it a lot of times to be able to break a 0.22 inch thick sheet. You can also just buy pieces on Amazon that are already the size you want. I'll add one to the description that I think would be a good pick for this project. The next thing you're gonna need is a glass mesh mounted mosaic tile sheet. You're gonna want a nice trusty epoxy. I like the Gorilla Glue epoxy brand. You're gonna need at least four suction cups, preferably matching ones. I had some from random other aquarium accessories like filters and stuff. And those are the main ingredients to this project. The rest are gonna to be tools. Uh, you're gonna to need some drill bits, a couple different sizes. You're gonna need a drill, of course, and you're gonna need a tape measure. This is that acrylic scoring knife I was talking about if you don't wanna use a table saw. And last but not least, a heat gun. I use this all the time for so many projects. I know it's a little bit of an investment, but it's an awesome tool to have around the house. And then I just found some miscellaneous boards and other things that I'm gonna make little jigs out of just to make this project a little easier for myself. You could use whatever you want to do something like this. You'll see how it's set up in a second. But clear off that workbench and let's start building this thing. First thing you wanna do is basically figure out where you're going to be folding that bottom flange and that top flange and then you're gonna have that vertical flange as well because it's basically a big U shape on its side. So I guess maybe a C, but you know what I mean. So you're basically, going to try to break this up into three even pieces. If you want to copy the design I have, you could actually change it up a little bit if you have better ideas than me. Once you have it measured out, so there's three different panels, that middle panel is gonna be the panel that's resting up against the side of your tank, that vertical glass of your tank. And that's also where your suction cups are gonna be installed. So what I'm doing is I'm finding an even orientation to, I'm basically marking a two by two grid. So you're gonna have four suction cups evenly spaced in that center panel area. It doesn't need to be perfect. You can be like literally half an inch off here, but it looks better the closer it is to symmetric, of course. With your holes located, it's time to make those a little more permanent and start drilling them out. I take a better safe than sorry approach here and I start with a smaller bit. I'm using a 1 8 inch bit to start here because acrylic can be rather easy to crack if you start drilling away with giant bits really fast without being careful with what you're doing. And acrylic sheets are kind of expensive, so you don't wanna make expensive mistakes here just because you're rushing or you're not thinking it through. Just use a smaller bit to start. And hey, if you make a big mistake, then you only have a small hole to deal with versus a big hole that we're gonna to get to in a second. All right, small holes done. Let's make those really big holes. I'm gonna use a 5 16 inch bit here. And why did I choose this bit? It is the size that's large enough for the neck of those suction cups to fit in. That's key here. You don't want suction cups with necks bigger than the biggest drill bit you have, uh, which I had some suction cups like that, couldn't use those. So I had suction cups, luckily, that fit with my biggest drill bit, which was this one. So I wanna show you here how the suction cup fits in the holes I just made. You'll see I push the neck of that suction cup through the hole. It doesn't fit all the way through like a normal suction cup might. 
in a different thickness of plastic. It doesn't matter because we're going to glue it. So as long as it can get partially into that hole, glue will hold it really well, especially epoxy. With that, it's time to set up your little jig so that you can start to bend your acrylic so it looks a lot like that U that the end product needs to be. So I'm just using some plastic planters here to elevate this board. You'll notice I actually use this board to size my panels on my sheet, making this really convenient for when I'm bending everything. You'll see that in the end. And I just have this spare two by four that I like to put on top. And you'll see why this is important in a second, but it allows you to be able to aim a heat gun right where you wanna melt it without heating up too much of other areas of the actual acrylic sheet. Now I'm just using a square here. Sorry, I didn't introduce this tool before just to make sure everything is squared up. It doesn't need to be perfect here again. I'm just kind of eyeballing it just so it's good enough. Now I know, what kind of work ethic is that? But with everything lined up, squared up, grab that heat gun, plug it in and fire it up. I typically use the high heat setting and you'll notice here, all I'm doing is dragging it back and forth along that seam right at the edge of where those two boards pinch our acrylic sheet, back and forth about an inch to two inches off of your acrylic sheet. Now, what to watch out for here is don't overheat the acrylic because you're gonna end up making it bubble and it won't bend as easily and it'll look really bad. So if you start to see little white bubbles, you're adding too much heat, pull away from the acrylic sheet a little bit and just apply less heat. You'll see I'm going back and forth here. I'm trying to get the heat as uniform as possible through the thickness of our sheet. I'm mostly gonna stick to the top because it doesn't need to be perfect, but I like to get the bottom a little warm too. Just makes things go a little faster. But what you're gonna do here is you're gonna keep heating it up, keep going back and forth. Don't get hasty, don't get too close because you're gonna start melting it real fast before you notice and it'll look really bad and you'll have ruined the sheet. But go back and forth. It'll slowly start to bend on its own. You can even guide it a little bit with your hand. But with a thick sheet like this, it took me a couple minutes just to get it up to a heat that it actually started to bend at. Let's snap a finger to get to that point, shall we? And there it goes. It's been heated up enough to easily fold it back and you wanna basically put it a little past 90 degrees so that when it actually cools off, it'll bend back to that 90 degrees. I just use a drill here to kind of prop it up. Now let it cool. Let's take a look at our bend that we just made. Looks like 90 degrees. Excellent. Let's start on that other side. You're going to be bending that third panel into the same orientation as the one you just bent. It's going to be at U. Don't try to make a Z unless you really want to. All right, so the other flange is bent. We got our U. Uh, however, I learned a little lesson here and I bent it too far. I was a little bit too ambitious with the over 90 degree advice I just gave all of you. So don't go way over because then you're going to get uh, not 90 degrees and it's not going to look good because this is supposed to look very square in your tank. So I didn't like the look of it. So right back to our little jig and I heated it all back up and bent it back a little bit. It's that easy. All right, you can see the project coming together. Next step is to install your favorite tiles. Now, I say favorite because this is an aesthetic choice. This isn't necessary for the project to be successful, but it's gonna make it look really good in your tank if you pick something out that you really like. It's something you wanna look at all the time, something you think your turtle will love in their little home. Really important thing here is this is basically a 12 by 12 tile sheet, and it's a bunch of little tiles connected to a mesh. The mesh is really important because it holds all the tiles together. You can see how small these tiles are. And if you didn't have that mesh, it'd be really hard to glue because if you were gluing every single little tile, that would be a huge pain. But with that mesh, you can just spread glue over the mesh and it pretty much picks up really easily all those tiles. I also picked out tiles that I knew would fit well on the piece of acrylic that I cut out. I was also careful with the type of tile sheet and the design of the tile, you can get tiles that have an overhang so that there's like a seamless transition on the backsplash of your kitchen. You don't want that, at least I didn't for this project, because then you have to individually cut those overhang tiles so that they fit well. And that's just not required for this project. Cutting the mesh is super easy. You can just use a utility knife, you can probably use scissors. And I'm just cutting it so it fits on top of each of those flanges as well. I had a couple spare pieces, so I was actually able to put tiles on that bottom flange as well. 
Once you have those tiles cut, you think it looks good, it's time to permanently adhere them to those flanges on your bent acrylic. I'm gonna use one of my favorite adhesives, that's Gorilla Epoxy. Epoxy in general is just an excellent type of adhesive to use for turtle tanks, for any kind of tank, because it's really strong bond that can bond to like almost anything. And it's waterproof once it's inert and completely dry. That takes about 24 hours, but it's a great adhesive for underwater purposes. If you've never used an epoxy before, it's a little bit different than glue. You basically have two different liquids. One's gonna be a base resin, the other's gonna be a curing agent, and those are separated until you're ready to mix them up and actually glue something together because once they're mixed up, they start to dry and they start to cure. So you can see here, you push a little bit out and then there's a little mixing stick. Use this to mix together that base resin, that curing agent really well. And then all you have to do is apply it to what you want to glue it to. Big thing to remember here, almost forgot, remove that protective film on your acrylic sheet. It comes that way to prevent scratching, but it's also really hard to see. So don't forget to remove that. It comes on both sides of the sheet and I'm gonna do that throughout our installation here. You'll actually notice after just like a minute, this stuff starts to harden a little bit. So you gotta act fast. Uh, you only have a few minutes before it's basically unusable because you can't spread it anymore and it dries really strong. So get it everywhere you need it and be a little bit hasty about it. It's not super glue, so it's not instant, but don't go make lunch in the middle of this gluing process. But as you can see, I just kind of spread it along the top of the flange there, try to get the corners and places that are gonna be sensitive to your turtle trying to rip it off, as you know turtles might try to do. And then just take your pre-cut tile mesh sheet and place it right on that glue. Get it where you need it. And you can just wait a couple minutes and it'll start to cure and hold itself in place. But I'm gonna start working on that lower flange now. I'm gonna peel off that protective coating, don't forget that, and get that installed. All right, next thing to do, last but not least in fact, is installing our suction cups. We're gonna permanently glue these suction cups inside of the holes that we drilled on the vertical portion of our bent acrylic sheet. So take that mixed epoxy and just put the neck of your suction cup in it. Now, I was extremely sloppy here. Don't do what I just did where I just got it all over the suction cup. You want the suction cup to still be able to function as a suction cup. So gluing it will make it permanently hard. You don't want to do that. You want it to be able to be flexible like a suction cup should so it can suction to your glass. Now you can see I'm just kind of jamming it into that hole, making sure the glue is basically squeezing out the other side and the glue is gonna to be totally around the hole and holding in the suction cup. At the end here, I'm going to wipe down any of that glue that you saw me sloppily get all over the suction cup and any extra glue that I get on the acrylic because if you're too sloppy, you'll be able to see it in the end product, which I'm gonna to try to avoid for the most part. But just do that same process for all four of your suction cups. So I actually found an excellent spot for a little spare piece of tile and that was right on that vertical wall there. And so I glued it there. I think it came out pretty well. And there you have it. Everything is bent and epoxied. Just let that epoxy cure. It takes about 24 hours and then it can go right in our tank. I can feel Harold's excitement. With the epoxy fully cured, it's safe to install in the tank. I moved all the sand from the bottom out of the way because that bottom surface needs to sit on the top of the glass. Suction cupped it to the side of the wall. And last but not least, I added a little artistic touch of fake vine. All right, so the combo resting area and cave is installed. You can actually see Harold's little back foot there using that resting area, so success. The suction cups are perfectly adequate to hold this whole thing in place. Since there's four of them in that arrangement, the turtle has been pushing it around and can't budge this thing. The resting area is great because now my turtle can put her back feet on the resting area and still get a breath of fresh air. And she can also just hide or even sleep under the cave area where it's nice and safe and secure. So if you decided to make this, good luck and thanks for watching. Leave comments, questions, hit that subscribe button if you wanna see projects like this. Thanks for watching. Long live your turtle.